Happy Halloween! I am a skeleton. S sorta, kinda. Uh, I was actually kind of um, pressed for time to get an outfit and a costume. It's Halloween-ish. I mean, um, this year Halloween is uh, on a Monday, and no one's going to celebrate Halloween on a Monday, so... Yeah, we're doing this, oh, what is today, Saturday, Saturday night. Uh, I don't actually have anything costumey, so sadly I'm moderately goth-ish, so these are just kind of my clothes. Anyway, uh, I went from having nothing to do to, like, having a whole bunch of stuff I wanted to do, and... I think I'm gonna see if I can do a couple of these, like maybe over the course of the night, perhaps during the witching hour, or not. Uh, we'll see. It's a, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Ugh. All right. First of all, this is one hot Halloween. I was wearing layers like days ago. Now it's 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 like it's hot again. <laughs> it's ah the the weather in Ohio. One thing I wanted to do was kind of a review of uh, Dirk Gently, the Holistic Dete Detective Agency. It's a new show on BBC America. It's based on the Douglas Adams series of books. I believe there were two, both of which are on the shelf behind me. Uh, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency and Long Dark. Tea Time of the Soul, and I don't know how many people are even aware that this is a thing, so I wanted to, you know, just make people aware of it, because, and, and watch it myself and then review it, which I've done the first half of. So, let's go. So, Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, the books themselves, particularly the first book, is kind of built on an odd premise. The premise of which is Dirk Gently is a detective, but he doesn't actually rely on clues or any actual detective work. Uh, there's a long-running bit where uh, he was originally hired to find this woman's cat, and he's charged her like, you know, hundreds, even thousands of pounds to, to hunt down this cat, which has taken him across the country and internationally on a search for a cat, which he's, once again, he's a holistic detective, so he's not actually looking for clues or doing an investigation, but hoping that over the course of his natural, ordinary life, doing as he sees fit, will run into randomly clues that will lead him to solve the mystery because all things are connected. It's an odd premise, and it's it's more of a weird bit in the story that... I should even go into that a little bit. Uh, in the story itself, in the book, particularly the first book, it's more of a bit that kind of gets the ball rolling. Like, that's the, the starting position, but then it goes into a series of crazy uh, events many of them relying on incredible coincidences and uh, synergy and and so on just to kind of forward the plot which is which the point is to sort of kind of prove Dirk gently right and that it's a cute book I recommend the book uh, the first one anyway the second one it isn't bad it's Douglas Adams his stuff is is quirky I'd go so far as to say that the Dirk Gently Holistic Detective Agency, the novel, and more broadly, uh, Douglas Adams, uh, his books rely more on on his writing style. It's not necessarily the story itself that's super duper compelling. It's usually a pretty damn weird story. 
which allows him, I mean, sometimes he'll take a break and go on a completely random, weird, seemingly unrelated tangent, and then we'll find a way to, to sort of work it back into the story or hey, say, hey, that crazy thing I did earlier is just connected to stuff it's in some way. So I, I'm a big fan of Douglas Adams. I love the uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, the first th three books in particular three or four books in particular. The first three books in particular. Uh, the Detective Agency I thought wasn't bad. I liked it. Um, but, and that's where we're kind of leading in. I was interested in Douglas Adams because I like adaptions of his work. I understand the the movie adaption of Hitchhiker's Guide wasn't well received, although I liked it just fine. I thought it was interestingly presented and I think that more than anything captures the spirit of the book because that was the whole point, the weird presentation. So let's go into it. Let's start with saying that first I liked it with a couple caveats. One, it's the first episode of something. It's essentially the pilot. Always take that with a grain of salt because, I mean, going both ways, the pilot of anything is going to be a little rough the character the actors aren't quite in the characters heads just yet they don't know they really don't have them fleshed out and know who this person they're portraying is really uh on the flip side you can have the show can be based on a gimmick that kind of gets worn out after the first episode and then it loses steam and the rest of the season the rest of the series just isn't that great so pilots can go either way so never i, I would say never judge uh, a series based on one episode, particularly the pilot, because the pilot could go anyway. It could be perfectly indicative of the rest of the show, it could be way better than any other episode, or it could just be, you know, just like, ah, oh, it's not that great, but they really get their feet under them, you know, a few episodes in. This show, I don't know. Uh, the Dirk Gently thing of incredible coincidences and uh, of that as a major plot element and then the weirdness of its implied time travel but also god what else has been in the detective agency series of books the two books the god thor which is not seen but mentioned like the events of long dark tea time of the soul are are kind of very briefly mentioned in the story. God, 1987. This book originally came out in 1987. Damn. And the second book, Long Dark Tea Time of the Soul, came out uh, in 88. And then apparently some short stories came out uh, afterwards. Uh, the Salmon of Doubt, a collection of stuff he'd written but had never been published. Alright, so going through this the series itself is very loosely based on the series you have uh, once again that sort of the synergy of of coincidence being a driving force for the plot Dirk Gently being a kind of a kooky character because he, he really the strength of this series this episode in particular but the series overall is going to rest firmly on the actor uh, Samuel Bar Barnett Samuel, Samuel Barnett. He's the one who plays the Dirk Gently. Uh, with the Elijah Wood as Ton, Todd Broatsman, which I don't recall from the series of books. Certainly not the first one, so I assume he's someone made up for the series. As I said, it's loosely based on Let's it. go through this. Positives. Elijah Wood is always cool in everything he does. He's always always brings a great energy to it. He's a fantastic actor. And he's good at playing a kind of a foil. I mean, he's the main character of the show, even though he's not the title character. But he's more the normal-ish guy that strange events surround. From that description alone, you kind of get where this series is going. The weirdness of this source of this series will be a not judging from just the first episode, but from what I can gather, glean, and guess at. It's a collection of 
time travel. Uh, at one point, I think we see the CIA and the FBI. I see that damn cat, I think, that he's chasing after. Uh, what else? Oh, just a bunch of stuff. And this thing includes a holistic serial killer. Pardon me, a holistic assassin, who's honestly just a spree killer. Which brings into question what exactly is Dark Gently, then. Uh, a number of characters I don't I think were made just for this series because it really needed to be filled out. The book themselves the books themselves are although in all fairness I haven't read a salmon of doubt, uh, the books were a little sparse. Like I said, it's Douglas Adams' storytelling is more the weird way he describes events than necessarily the actual events themselves, because sometimes he's just like, Oh yeah, and they, they did this and got in the thing and got away. You know, it's more like... Uh, it's hard to explain. But this... To make this a proper TV series is a little tricky. So, they had to pan it out with extra characters. I, like I said, I think Elijah Wood's character was completely invented for the series to be the normal person that the very weird Dirk Gently sort of plays off of. The foil to make, to ground this, because otherwise it's just a weird guy doing weird stuff with weird random events happening with no explanation or ties or anything like that. You need someone to to go, hey, this is kind of strange, and then when the strange, inexplicable thing happens, you need someone to explain that to so you can direct that in your own way towards the audience. It's the point of view character, really. That said, it was pretty good. There are a lot of mysteries, like who's this person, and wh that, which I think is going to be a big thing. It's lost as a comedy, sort of. Like, wow, that's a bunch of weird stuff. What does that mean? Uh, for example, um, there are these three, four guys who show up and just destroy stuff and do clearly something weird or supernatural or alien. And it's like, well, what are those guys about? What do they represent? Why are they there? It's never explained in this episode. That'll be, I assume, for later on, where they're given more context. But this show's rife with that sort of thing. Just weird stuff's happening, very strange characters, and it's like, well, why is that person there and doing this, and why is this happening? Some of those questions will never have answers. This is my prediction. It's just like, oh, it's just a weird coincidence. Others will be sort of the driving force for whatever happens to be happening in the story. Uh, coincidence, luck, chance, and the interconnectedness of all things is, is, is what this story is about. Review for Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency. Step one, will you see this and not like it? What are the odds you're going to see this thing and not like it? That's tricky. Because I really did like it. But I'm... I'm more the exception to the than the rule. Uh, I'm coded to like it. I like Douglas Adams a lot. So anything with his name on it, I'm going to be more well disposed towards. I think there's a decent chance you're going to see this and not like it. Uh, not... God, it's hard to say. This is not going to be everyone's cup of tea. As n as good as it was, and it was good, it's not going to be everyone's thing. It is profoundly weird. If you like things that connect dots. I mean, it, ostensibly, it's a detective show, so theoretically it should be murder, investigation, conflict, more investigation, Ah, resolution, and then aftermath, with some exceptions. Uh, oh, Columbo was a good exception where you saw the murder for where you saw where you knew exactly what was going to happen. You knew who the murderer was, how they did it, and so on. The story was how does Columbo figure that out? Likewise, this is not a detective thing at all. I mean, it's not. It's more a bunch of weird stuff has happened, and some of that will be explained while other inexplicable stuff happens. It's very strange, and I don't think that's going to be everyone's cup of tea. I know a couple people 
right off the top of my head, including at least one housemate, who would look at this and go, this is just a confusing random mess. See it and not like it, I'm going to say one in four, maybe? Maybe one in three, one in four. Like, decent odds. It's more of a specialty thing. Like, if you like British comedies, although it isn't one, it, I mean, it's BBC America, but it is very much... Uh, all the characters are American except for one, and that's Dirk Gently himself. Uh, it takes place in America, just done by BBC America. But if you like that style of thing, you you might want to give it a chance. Uh, if you like this kind of crazy, chaotic weirdness, you might like it. If you're a huge Douglas Adams fan, you might want to give it a shot. Uh, I never felt Dirk Gently was as cool as as a uh, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide, but it was neat. It's neat. It's a, it's definitely has Douglas Adams' uh, trademark moves of of weirdness and weird storytelling all over it. How well that's going to translate into a TV show, I don't know. So far, the show, the Hitchhikers, does not translate well into a movie or a TV show. Uh, I mean, I I like the the British show from the '80s well enough, but it's it's just it loses something in the translation. And I think the same thing's going to be true of Dirk Gently. It's got to find its its sort of rhythm. So, like I'm saying, it, there are things to take exception with. Some people would like it simply because, I, I'll say one in three, comfortably, because a lot of people aren't going to dig this. There's a good one in three chance you'll see this and just go, this is not for me. Uh, would I see it again? That's a good question, and I wouldn't say clearly a yes. It's, it's weird, it, but it's not... Yeah, I'd give it a try. I'd say maybe. It's not a solid. It's not a solid yes, but a maybe because uh, it might be worth. Because I think the the see it again part of it is going to be after it's explained where this weirdness came from. Then you go back and oh, because there was clearly time travel involved in this story. So going back and go, oh, okay, so that's when that happened, and then this is going to be that. Oh, okay, I got it. So that'll be really when to see it after the you watch the whole season. You know, we get to the climax, the end of the season, and then, haha, then we'll watch it again. So yeah, it's worth watching again. It, it wasn't so unbearable. I wouldn't watch it again. Like if someone said they wanted to see it again right now, I'd see it with them. It wouldn't be torture or anything like that. Lord knows I've seen things in the last few months where it's like, um, you couldn't compel me, short of <laughs> monetary compensation, and even then, it better be good. But this was good. This I liked it. If you're a fan of Douglas Adams, it's worth it's worth checking out. Uh, like and subscribe if you're inclined to. Uh, I'm probably going to do... A um, bunch of other stuff, or at least record them tonight, because I'm feeling Halloween-y, you know? Yeah, we'll see how this goes. Alright, uh, babbling now. Uh, that's me, I'm out.